Do you want to fix the bass in your two-channel system? That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delisalo with Audioholics. I want to help you two-channel guys out. Let's just go over a scenario where you just set up this nice two-channel system. You got full range towers. You're spinning your favorite vinyl records or you're spinning your favorite CDs and you go and play it back and you're just not getting the bass depth or impact you were hoping for. Before you throw those speakers out, let's go over five ways that you can fix the bass in your two-channel system so you can have a very pleasant, very satisfied and fulfilled experience when you're listening to music. So the first thing I really want to stress to you guys, please get one of these. Get a microphone, a calibrated microphone with, that's USB interface to your laptop. I personally use the Dayton Audio UMM6. I'll put a, a link in the description below. It's a pretty good microphone. It's not that expensive. It's under 100 bucks, and it's got pretty decent accuracy down to about 20 hertz, maybe a little bit lower than that. But that's all we really care about is we want to get that good bass integration uh, for our speakers. So the first thing I'm going to tell you about out of the five is if you've got bad bass, try moving your speakers. So if you set up your room, let's say you have a rectangular room, and you decided to put the speakers up against the long wall, and you wanted to put your seating area at a certain distance from there, and it's just not working out, first try moving the speakers in or out from that front wall. If that's still not giving you the base that you're satisfied with, you might want to change the location in the room. You might want to put those speakers on the shorter wall and just rearrange your seats. Many times it, it really is about how that speaker is playing into the room, just like a subwoofer. If you want to get the best location for bass in a room, you have to move those subwoofers around. Unfortunately though, with full range speakers, not always do you get the case where the best location for bass coincides with the best location for listening to music, listening to full range. So we'll go over uh, another method that we could do if you find a better location for bass that doesn't suit you for the positioning of your speakers for two channel. So number one, move your speakers. Number two, move your seats. You know, I've seen people, uh, people setups where they put their seats up against the back wall or they put them on a side wall. And we went over this in our last video that we did. Um, can you get good two channel music in a home theater? Generally speaking, you want to keep your seats away from a back or side wall. The back walls put you in a pressure maximum area, so you're gonna get a lot of standing waves. You'll probably get more bass boost up against the back wall, but it's not gonna be very even or articulate bass. So you wanna stay away from the back wall if you can. But just generally moving those seats three or four feet front or behind where they are now might get you out of that null area that's causing your bass problem, and it might give you more satisfying bass. So sometimes just moving your seats is a very good way to get better bass in that area that you're listening to two-channel music. So the next one, and this is kind of an, you know, an expensive and kind of a kludgy way to do it, but you could use bass traps. And I'm, so, I'm pro bass traps when I'm dealing with higher frequency bass between 80 hertz and like two, 300 hertz. It's difficult when you're dealing with bass problems below 80 hertz to get effective bass trapping because they have to be very large, they're bulky, and they're expensive. So one thing I like to do, um, I do this in my home theater room because I can, and if you guys have the ability, this is something you might want to consider too. If you look at the corners of my rooms, you see these bass traps. They're the uh, kind of a brownish color from floor to ceiling. That kind of stuff can really help out. If you could treat the corners of the room or sometimes treating the back of the room behind you with you know, some type of a, a bass trap can, can really help change the sound of that system. And you could be able to measure the difference if it's helping or not. So another thing I wanna tell you guys about number four, and I did this in this room. See, this, uh, this room is my office. So when we built this house, the Audi Hawk Smart House, this room only had a half wall. And I noticed a huge suck out in the 25 to 30 hertz range. And I just could not get good bass out of these Revel speakers that you see behind me. And I thought at first it was a problem with the speakers. Then I realized as I brought more speakers up here and I did measurements, it was the room issue. 
that half wall was acting like a base trap going downstairs and just sucking the life out of the room. So as you could see, I basically took that half wall and I'll show you a picture and I built a full wall, which is what you're seeing right now. I haven't even put my stuff back in place. This literally just happened. I built this wall. Now this is another very expensive and sometimes not practical approach. I did this mostly because I needed privacy in here when we're doing our videos and we're doing office work. We don't hear, want to hear noise in the rest of the house. But putting this wall here is going to make a huge difference in base response in this room that I didn't have before. And I don't have a lot of space in this office to add a big subwoofer. So I really wanted to put that wall, which brings me to number five, add a subwoofer. I know a lot of audiophiles are against subwoofers. You know, they think you can't get good fidelity if you add a subwoofer to the music. As I told you in the past, that's not true. If you know how to set up a subwoofer properly and you get good integration with your main speakers, it will be very seamless. And in fact, our own Steve Feinstein wrote an article and I'll link it in the video description down below. He basically had some legacy signature speakers. He originally had them in one of his... Uh, one of his other rooms where he was listening to music and he had great bass response in there. Well, when he moved them into a different room, cause he was rearranging his house, all of a sudden the bass response wasn't good at all. He just did not have a lot of low end. The room was just sucking the life out of it. So in this case, he added a subwoofer, as you could see to the left of the speakers, he had an SVS subwoofer and this made the world of difference for him. He found the right crossover point in this case was around 40 or 50 Hertz and he got it well integrated into the room and now all of a sudden he's got full range towers again he didn't have to move the towers he didn't have to move his seats he just simply added one subwoofer because he only is worried about a narrow sweet spot maybe two or three seats and it just worked out really well for him and i want to show you some quick measurements so in my own theater room as you can see in this trace this is at the front row the main listening position and actually i took an average of uh, three seats and I came up with this graph. And if you see in the red, that's without the subwoofers in the back. That's just the main speakers with their own powered subs built in. And you can see that huge suck out at around 95 hertz. It's really bad uh, in, that, in that seating area. And that's caused by um, SBIR effects. And I'm going to do a separate video on that as well. And we could go over that later. But as you can see in the green trace, <clears throat> excuse me, adding those rear subwoofers really made a difference. It smoothed the bass response out. You can see I gained about four dB of uh, bass output across the entire frequency spectrum from 70 Hertz and below and actually linearized and flattened the bass. But I got a 15 dB boost of that bad suck out. So that really helped fill in the blanks there, fill in that pretty wide gap. And as a result, the bass is a lot smoother. It sounds more integrated. And I also checked this. I did a wavelet using REW. And you could see it's a straight line from 20 kilohertz all the way down to the bass frequencies where it gradually rises up until about, you know, 5, 10 milliseconds down to 20 hertz, which is awesome. I mean, that's a really good measurement. If you misalign a subwoofer, you'll see a big step response in the base where the sub crosses over to the mains. And in this case, it's very linear and it's not happening because I have proper integration. So those are really the five best ways to get bass restored to your two-channel system. Please let me know down below which method you used. I'm, I'm kind of curious um, if you applied any of these methods to fix a bass issue in your own room. And if you want to hear more on each of these different aspects of, of what I recommend, give me some comments below. I'm just doing a very general video like I did with the two channel for home theater video. And if you guys want to see more advanced videos on these topics that I cover, give me some comments, smash that subscribe button, hit the like button, do everything you can to spread the word. We appreciate that. And don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. I appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics or if you just want to ask any questions uh, and see content earlier in advance than you get to see on the regular YouTube channel or the editorial site. And please make sure you read Steve Feinstein's article, which I linked here. I think it's very useful. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.